you know, I I um I wasn't uh, actively looking to get the vaccine, or whatever, and neither was my uh, neither was my friend uh, Jeremy. Jeremy wasn't looking to get the vaccine either, right? And he calls me up. He calls me up like out of the blue. He goes, he goes, man, are you are you getting the vaccine? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just waiting for a spot to open up. And he goes, oh, cool. Uh, um, I'm getting the vaccine. I was like, oh, good. He goes, yeah, but. But I didn't book it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? I go, what Mama? happened? I go, oh, my wife, <laughs> my wife, booked. like, just all of a sudden said, I've got a booking. I was like, oh, that's all right. He goes, but you're getting it, right? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it, right? And I haven't booked mine. At this time, I hadn't booked mine. Anyways, Emma, I don't know if they had a conference or whatever, right? No. Two days later, Emma no, goes... No, I came home from my walk. Yeah, Emma that, goes... That, that same Emma afternoon. says, I booked an appointment for you. And I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Like, <laughs> at, when, I left, when I left for my walk, he was on the phone to Jeremy. Then I came back. I didn't know what they were talking about. And that was like... Uh. I'm like, oh. And then I rang him up and went, hey, uh, you're still getting that vaccine, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting the vaccine, right? Because I'm booked in. <laughs> He's like, why? Because my, my wife booked it in. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. The B Side Word. Welcome back to the B Side Word podcast. I am Devin, your local emotional excavator. I'm here with Emma. Hello. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alexander. Ahoy! On this podcast today, we're going to crack the surface and go deep into the earth to discover our thoughts and emotions on different topics. I want to bring up Sean. You sound like a uh, what's one of those people that dig up stuff? Paleontologist, archaeologist, archaeologist. Mm. Archaeologist of podcast. Uh, but I'm an I'm a Aki sh- Sharma. Oh. Oh, Akshama. Akshama. Or a guru. One Ak- of them. Akshama. Akshama. I want to bring up Sean Locke. Do you know who Sean Locke is? Oh, no. yes. Tragic. I don't. Sean Locke is one of my favorite comedians. One of my favorite, favorite comedians. And when the headline came up that he died at 58. What? I was, I was like, what? This, this is like, I thought it was fake news. Honestly, I thought it was like, yeah. this can't happen because I've been watching him on 8 out of 10 cats. And I was like, he, he he's he's crazy. He's so funny on there. Can I tell you, when yeah. I first watched him, I went, who is this guy? And then when I kept watching him, I'm like, he's a funny mother, mother effer. He is one mon- funny mother fighter. Mother trucker. <laughs> I've never heard of him, but this is sad. And I've also never heard of 8 out of 10 cats. With uh, Jimmy Carter. What? Clark. What, what are you it? talking about? What is it? Are oh. you serious? And you're you're not English. Is this English? You should leave. Yes. Eight out of ten cats might be one of the funniest like live comedy. I don't know what you call it. I've never even heard comedian, of it. Comedian comedy panelist shows ever. Since when? It's Since been ever? on for years. Like a long time. And how have you even heard of this? And we, 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 we've never watched it together. No, I watch it on the internet. What? And then there's, they do I AR. Watch, I watch it on Foxtel. Oh, I don't. Well, I don't have Foxtel. Anyways, I wanted to bring him up. Like this is one of Trevor my favorite. Trevor Noah. This is one of my favorite things. Yeah, he right? was on it. I, I'm gonna play just the audio. Up Sean Locke okay. in the dictionary, what, what would we find? What would be the definition of Sean Locke? If you look me up in the dictionary, you'd get a four-letter word. It's got a C in it, a U in it, and a T in it. And that word is, of course, cute. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I don't think a dictionary has got enough words in it to describe me. You know, I don't think... I, don't, I think it's, I'm such an amazing, complicated... I'm more like a sensation, an idea. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the best way to describe me is with a fragrance. <laughs> You'd smell it and you go, that's, that's Sean Locke. You'd smell it, you'd smell it. It'd be like hot tarmac and a vet's flannel. <laughs> hey, you're an incredibly happy man. <laughs> He's a funny guy. He's a funny, funny guy. The, the, Is that the show you're talking that's about? That's the show. No, that was Countdown. But the funniest one, that, the, one that I, the one that got me with him was like carried in a box. 
Oh yeah. 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 Carrot carrot in a box. Is carrot the best. in a box. What is it? I fancy me some <laughs> carrot. <laughs> He was Can like, I see it? So there's this there's these two boxes, right? All right. And Sean Sean like uh, can someone else explain it? I can't explain it. There's there's a put just put it on. I don't even re- I don't even recognise his face if I'm honest. What? Oh, Emma, you're missing out. I know. Yeah, Em. I watch it every night before I go to bed. What? Eight out of ten. There's so many. Like you could start watching I now think... from the beginning, and you'll be watching it for the next like decade. I might. Start. <laughs> so much. That, I maybe. might start. Um, I think that Australia isn't as good as um England in terms of like your panel shows. Oh nah. All right. We're, we're this, not. This is like, this uh, is um. For English comedy. Listen to this. Carry in uh, the box. No 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 no. no. <laughs> Can't look in yet. Oh my God, no, Sean. You don't want to ruin it. Oh sorry. It's an incredible game. Okay. John and Sean, this is a bluffing game. John, in front of you, there is a red box. Sean, in front of you, there is a gold box. There's a carrot in one of these boxes. I know, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> the aim of the game is to end up with the carrot. It's a game of bluff. When do we do the conundrum? <laughs> Sean, stand still, that's fine. John, you want a carrot? Sean, you want a carrot. But there is only one carrot. Let's play. <clears throat> <laughs> Shh. It's incredible. Shush. 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 It's a brilliant game. Shush. Stupid. <laughs> Stop ruining Christmas. Don't you tell me. Why are you ruining Christmas? I'm not ruining Christmas. Well, you this are. Is, this is ruining Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his little face. He's excited about playing. You've got to ruin it for everyone. Yeah, I can't wait to win this carrot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's play. Carrot in a box. Okay, Sean, you can look inside your box. John, you cannot look inside your box. Okay, you want the carrot, Sean. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't put no hands in the box. You can look inside the box. Have you looked? Have you seen? Yeah. Okay, you now have to convince John to swap his box if you think he has the carrot or keep your box. It's a game of bluff. The winner yeah. is the one with the carrot. Oh, I, I'm, I'll, I'll keep this. <laughs> <laughs> Choice. Do you want to swap or not? I mean, he seems confident there's a carrot in there. He's seen the floor in this game. He's plowing on. <laughs> what do you mean, Jimmy's plowing on? It's my job. <laughs> Is Sean bluffing? Does he have a carrot in his box? <laughs> It's a real quandary for me, Jimmy, this. Well, he can choose them. Yeah, box. he's allowed to swap yeah. if he wants so to swap. Can't, but can't I just keep my box? <laughs> no, he can swap if he wants well, to swap. Well, I can refuse to swap it. No. You can't make somebody swap something. They want to swap it. Have it's you never real... played Carrot in a Box before? You know, have you never seen the show? I must it's have been on holiday. Time. I must have been on holiday that it's... week. It was allowed out. <laughs> Do you want to keep your box or swap your box? I can keep this or I can have the box that's definitely got a carrot. <laughs> yes. I want Sean's box. <laughs> OK, we'll grab Sean's box. Sean, let go of the box. Sorry. It's the nature of the game. It's the nature of the game. Can I just say at this point, if there's no carrot in that box, you are a genius. <laughs> well, let's, let's swap boxes. Swap boxes. <laughs> swap the boxes. Swap. Am I allowed to have my box back? Is there another round where I get to have... The box with the carrot in back. I, I'm going to be level with you, fellas. We've never played this game before. We do not know how it ends. OK, so, John, you're now allowed to look in your box. Right. And, and I believe you can reveal... Point it the other way. Does it contain a carrot or not? <laughs> the, smug, the smug face. I actually thought you had a carrot in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why is it called th- eight out of ten cats? You know, that's a good the question. Statist- no 
It's about statistics, statistics, polls, and opinions. Oh, there you go. They oh, ask yeah. questions like they're the so they do that and they do it's eight out of ten cats. There's countdown. So eight out of ten cats, they do questions about statistics, polls, and opinions. Cool. I wanted to. I wanted to do. A, I don't know if it's an ode. I don't know. I want to pay respect or whatever to to Sean Locke, and I wanted to ask you guys, what is your favorite uh, fragrance? What would your fragrance be? Oh. To describe us. Yeah, yourself. So we share our. Uh, just as you know. I've got to let me think know. about that. Yeah, have uh, uh, have some time. Have some time. Well, seeing as you've uh, come up with this question, I'm assuming you've had to think about this. So why don't you give us an idea? It would be. It would be a combination. I'd have to combine movies, um, electricity, and. So I'm thinking like burnt, the smell of burnt popcorn with, <laughs> with, um, with Coke on top. <laughs> <laughs> that is something burnt and sweet. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it would be a memorable fragrance. Le mm. Toilette. Uh, burnt popcorn. Can you taste that? Learnest. L- Learnest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, nah, I wouldn't mm. want that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it'd be if you <laughs> burnt popcorn. <laughs> yeah, on your neck. What would you want? Uh, milk. It chocolate. doesn't matter what you oh. want. <laughs> um, have to be something I think chocolate. I'd go a rubber leather. Mix, smell with uh, overheated laptop, <laughs> <laughs> sandwiched in the middle, and the uh, the rubber the rubber leathers the basketballs. Well, yeah. yeah, I thought that was something else. I was thinking like you had that mask with the mouth cut out. You know those masks because that that latex. It's got, it's got a <laughs> gib, gib mask. A gib mask. Like, well, why does he want rubber on his body? <laughs> what is it called? Get my um, anything else about no, Sean Locke? No, that is really sad though. Um, I, yeah, I'm sad, sad to hear. That's young age. It's it's sad. Like as an AR Ten Cats fan, I don't know. I don't know as know if they were ever going to do any more anyway. But like, you can't really. Like, it's, yeah, he he was such an important part of that. I've like I as you say, I've really enjoyed him as a comedian. But I that's how I know him. I don't know him as like a stand up or anything like that. Like, yeah, that's the format that I know him. Yeah, um, it suited him so it, well. Yeah, it sucks. So was he still it on sucks. this show? I can't believe there's a whole new show I haven't seen yet. <laughs> you can, you'll be able to see it for the first time. It'd be like a brand new show, Sean Locke. I know. Sad. Mm. All right, let's lighten up the mood, eh? That was sad. That was sad. Um, my friend needs help trying to stay out of the friend zone. Is that friend you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the friend? You're not saying. Emma, no, I can't say. Emma, Emma, have you been? Have you befriended him? <laughs> friend zoned. So, so give us the uh, give us the situation. Pound. You um. How do you tell someone that is historically known to constantly put themselves in the friend zone, like? What do you? What advice would you give to that person? That no. Wait, are you saying they're doing it on purpose? Oh, is this, N- no, this no. is a habitual friend zone. Per- yes. So this isn't advice for a specific out of this. No, friend no. Zone, just in general. He's always ending in the friend zone. He's always being. He always ends up in the friend zone. It's like Hugo he needs from to start the again. <laughs> he needs to start again. And he needs to start completely again, in terms oh. of. His entire approach is wrong. So from the very beginning, from the very moment he interacts with a woman, I'm assuming he's going for women. I don't know. Um, <laughs> just just change, change, change it. How? But well, what does he do? Like, I need to know what he does to be able to. I don't know, but like, how how would you have you? Are you a friend zone? Uh, 
Are you a friend zone expert? Like, have you, do you always end up in the friend zone with your, no, with your, no. So from a perspective of a person that, that knows how to navigate away from a friend zone, what advice would you give him? Say what you want. This is a really important part of it. Um, like typically when you, okay, when I've seen people get into a friend zone, typically the main sort of factors that lead you towards that point is you literally are their friend. Like you behave like a friend because yeah. you don't want to impose yourself as a potential mate or something because you don't want to intimidate or whatever. Like, I don't know what the mind, what the thought train, train of thought is going into it, but you, you're there for them. You help them with things like all this kind of stuff. Whereas if you want to be someone's partner, like there's boundaries to how you will interact with them before you know what each other's intentions are. Like you need boundaries. I think uh-huh. like they don't want to, if they say I want to be more than a friend, then what they currently have with their friendship will change. That's what they're scared of. If the, del- yeah, if the girl you- doesn't reciprocate. <clears throat> But this this is why I say change from the begin like from the ground up, from where you start, you don't you don't get yourself into a situation where there's a friendship to be changed. Like even if you want to become friends before you build a relationship, you can make it clear from the very beginning, like that I wanna get to know you, but at the end of the day, like I'm interested in you. Like we'll take it slow, I but I want I'm still I'm interested in you too. Yeah. I think that's a really important part. Like, communi- when it comes to this, communication, people are, af- like you're saying, they're afraid because they're afraid of something that's never happened. Like, it hasn't happened yet and they're afraid of it happening. But, like, if you know what you want, just put it out there. I don't know. Mm. It's quite, no, to no, me, it's, it, it, I reckon that's spot on, actually. I reckon that, yeah, it's pretty straight. <laughs> It's pretty straightforward. I think that's. I think the person has to be able to be willing to lose and like lose the friendship to to have a go at the girl. <laughs> to have a <laughs> to dip the toe in the ocean. All right. So let's say they did. Now my 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 question is: Who's the guy that has all these female friends? <laughs> I need a man <laughs> so I can hit on those fucking females. <laughs> what are you saying? Uh, let's say he does eventually tell the lady friend that he wants to be more than friends and she says no. Would he still stick around as nah. the same friend or no? No. Nah. Yeah, because I have been in this situation. Like, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? Like, because yeah, you hid your intentions for so long and then when you finally give it and they say no, yeah. it's like, I'm not hanging around because I, I don't want you to... I don't want to see you hooking like up with other people. And then they just look like a douchebag though. Who? Because like I've been in a situation too where I had no idea. I thought we were just mates, literally just mates. And then the other person... What? What? Just... Yeah, go okay, on. Hey, Emma. Let me just be the friends. first one to say what? this to you as a yeah, man. Go on. And then... Um, a majority, 90% of guys don't want to be your friend. This is what we spoke about the other week. I said, I don't think it's possible. I really... Like, maybe it is in the... Like, it can be, but I think typically it's not possible. Only because the person didn't um, give his intentions straight exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so then... So then um, by the time, and this was months after, they revealed, oh, they're actually interested and they wanted more. They kind of... And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, then they got all <laughs> sour, sour about it. And, like, that was it. Yeah. Friendship over. But yeah. it was such a good friendship. <laughs> like, and I'm just like. But it wasn't. The that's hell? the thing. It, it was good, never a friendship. Good. Which, yeah, it it, which makes yeah. them look like a douchebag. Because it's like, what, was this whole thing a lie? Just because you wanted more. Yeah. yeah. But it's not. It, it, like, I see from that perspective. I see. You see it as you were using this to get more, but they were never using that. That's just their game. Like they just don't know another way to engage into that scenario. Like that's how they think you're supposed to. Do you get what I mean? Like it's not not a manipulative, intentional, conscious choice to 
I'm going to be a friend. They just think if I'm a friend, it evolves. Like that's right. where the door opens. They're playing the, the door long game. Open. Mm. Yeah, they're playing. Yeah. They think they think you got to go through the friendship door to get to the relationship door, but yeah. really right. they're two. There are two different paths. Yeah, and then but they like, were pissy at me for saying no. Yes. Thinking, well, why is she saying no? I've been here as a friend, type thing. Yeah. I've helped her out. Yeah, that's it's a delusion to think that friendship equals relationship. Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. They they see it as a sign of there's chemistry. Yeah. There's. I, I think they've watched too many Sandra Bullock movies. <laughs> what do you mean, Sandra Bullock? Ends in like always ends in happy. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 doesn't she have like these movies where she's friends with the person and then falls in love with them at the end? <laughs> that you know. All right. So the friendship, the friendship path can work, right? But it's a very, very long game. Yeah. And I'm talking about a yeah. 10, 15 year process. Oh, I'll it tell you why. It doesn't have to be that I, long. I, I'm telling you, it has to be that long because the person, the woman or the man, has to go through crap relationships. And the guy, at the end of it, he's there. <laughs> he's just there. Mm. And then they're like, you know what? You've been there through all my ups and downs. Mm-hmm. And then that's when something, uh, something physical but do you may really happen. Do you, do you really want to be the um, second prize? It's not no, the it's not second. That, it's it? The, it was always you were always the first prize. They just didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but like you were never the first choice. No, it's not. That, I I, though, I it? think it w- what happens. I don't think they were always the first prize. I just think what happens is in that situation, the person who's been through the relationships has seen how their priority list has led them down the wrong path so then they yes, change they their change priority their list yeah. and then you just happen to meet that priority list and they they probably change it toward like unintentionally towards you anyway because they realize like the good qualities in you and they're like oh i like that quality oh wait it's just that person yeah. um and i'd say the only other way that the friend game works into a relationship is if you were both already attracted to each other from the very beginning, you just never did anything about it. Like if you're mm. both the type of people who get stuck in the friend zone, and then so you 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 get stuck in each other's friend zones by accident, and then one day you realize and go, wait, hold on a second, and we just why don't we just do this? And you're like, wait, you liked me? Yeah, I liked you. I liked you. You you like me? Yeah, yeah, I like. And then they just get together. I've seen that. Happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but didn't you, I don't even know if it was on this podcast, but I'm sure you mentioned when someone says, um, when, you know, there's like, you've, you've had like relationships and nowhere's working and you're like, where's all the good people? And then you're like, look in your friend zone. Like that person has been there all along. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also true. Cause yeah, maybe they have been. So, oh, that's so another long... question. How do you maneuver out of the friend zone? Anyways, yeah. Along those lines, this was a Twitter discussion this week about someone basically said, I don't care anymore. Call me shallow. Call me whatever you want. It's looks before personality. <gasps> That's how I'm moving from now on. If I'm not, uh, they said like, if I'm not obsessed with you from the jump, it's not going to work. Um, That's a whole other thing to unpack. And then someone said, yeah, because... Someone that you're attracted to their personality, but not their looks, that's called a friend. <laughs> yeah. I want to know your takes on that. Right. Um, well, what I was don't that last know. Bit? What was that last bit? Someone, someone you're attracted to. I can pull up the exact tweet if you want, because I'm probably butchering someone the Someone who you're attracted the to. But someone you're attracted to, that, like their you're attracted to their personality, but not their looks, that's called a friend. Mm. But... This is the thing. Maybe when you're longer, um, younger, longer, younger, you can go for looks. Mm. But even then, you go for looks, you're not going to talk to the person. Don't you want them to have a good personality? Yes. Or you're just going to be like, I don't care. Like as long as they look. No, good. they have to have a. They have to have a personality. They have to have like uh, the old. They have to Especially challenge you. Especially as you get older, but even when they you're have younger. to challenge you somehow. Do they? Mentally. Yes. Okay, the older you, the, old, the older you get, I don't believe the more personality that. matters. Uh, are you, but Emma, you challenge me every day. You tell me this, I know, but I still every don't believe. Every day you challenge me. You're on this earth to test me Which... to, so that I stay a certain per, a certain way as a person. So I don't lose my cool under pressure. 
You're there to test me every single day. Yeah, I still don't believe that a partner's there. You're to testing test me you. now. <laughs> <laughs> you're testing me. <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't even realize you're testing me. I, I know. <laughs> I'm I, testing, I, I feel like really. saying that to her. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, you know that testing here? Yeah, it's happening right now. <laughs> There you go. But it's I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's a good <laughs> thing. I'm saying that you having a different um point of view in the world is a good thing because I don't want someone that has the same like I do want someone that has the same opinion as me, but if you have a different point of view, I want you to be able to express it so that I don't get caught up in my own echo chamber. That's why I think it's really important that you have someone that you're moving in the same direction as you but has a different point of view. I think it's the it's the value system over opinions. If you have the same values, yeah, then you'll appreciate the express of different opinions, and you'll be able to navigate that together. Yeah, because I think like it- that's like this this idea of looks over person. As CJ said, like the older you get, the more personality matters. It's because when you're young, you don't have a personality. It hasn't developed yet. Like you haven't yeah. been through enough. <laughs> to actually develop values and all that kind of stuff. And I find it I find it really telling when people prioritize looks over personality. Like mm. it, to me to me it's I don't know, like you know you know we talked last week about the reality thing and about like if you wear a heavy backpack, a hill is physically in your eyes, it's steeper. Like it actually is steeper. <sighs> It's the same with looks. Like, I remember, not related to attraction, but when I was in uni, one of my roommates, one of my teammates, this guy was a spitting image of Neo. Like, the guy just looked just like him. Everyone said it to him. Man, do you know you look like Neo? Yeah, I've heard that. Hmm. Um, yeah. Was his hair also running away from his forehead? He, he yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I just wanted to know that was a Neo thing. And he... And it was one of those where, <laughs> obviously, I got to know him quite quite intimately. I lived in the same room as him, and he was my teammate. Spent a lot of time with the guy. And the more I got to know him, I was like, you look nothing like me. Like, his face physically changed in my mind because his personality wasn't what I expect Neo to be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah, he yeah, didn't yeah. look like him anymore. And I yeah. think it's the same with people you're attracted to. If you're attracted to someone's personality, they actually become more beautiful to you. That's the same when you factor in, like, the makeup of a successful relationship. Assuming success means staying together um, over the long term. You have to spend a lot of time with that person. Mm. A lot of time. And if looks is the only thing that's done it for you... I I mean, that fades, doesn't it? That fades (laughs) over time. Nah, it doesn't, man. Us men, we get more distinguished. (laughs) <laughs> I agree with that statement. Um, any more on this um, uh, friend zone? No. Relationship? Uh, only fans? Yeah. It's taking away all the sexual content? Yep. In the, in the sexual, coming up? Sexually there. explicit. Se- sexually explicit. So How does it? I don't. I've never been on this OnlyFans. I thought it. That's what it was. No, it no. wasn't. <laughs> oh. Can you look up the original why OnlyFans was have created? Reading glasses. <laughs> it's OnlyFans originally was kind of like a Patreon. It was just a yeah. place where content creators of any kind could put their creations behind a paywall, so yeah. that they could get paid for what they create. Um. Yeah. Same. Same as what Patreon does. And then, right oh, at the okay. beginning of the pandemic, for some reason, I literally have no idea why, but people just started using it for sexually explicit stuff, and women just started, mostly women, started migrating onto the platform. Yeah. To put their content on there, and men were paying for it. Literally, I have not, I cannot, I don't know if there was like a kickoff, like a particular person said, oh, I'm going to go to here and do it. I don't know why it became a thing. I think there was. I think there was. But it, yeah, it became massive to the point there's been 
more famous people who have got on there to use it because they make so much money. Like, um, I think we talked about it before. Uh, Barbie, what's her name? The Catch Me Outside girl. Oh, right. Um, like, she made, when she turned 18, released her yeah. OnlyFans and made a million in the first 24 hours. Wow. What? Like, people are making wow. absurd amounts of money on this thing. Yeah. Like, crazy amounts of money. And I think one of the <laughs> one of the more interesting things, conversations that this now brings up, because they're, they're getting rid of sexually explicit stuff, so they're still going to allow, like, nude photography and nudity in videos, but not anything that's graphic, like, sexually yeah. graphic. Yeah. Um, so... There's been a lot of like male driven podcasts. Like, do you know Fresh and Fit? No. Do you know these guys? I've I'm new to hearing about them. But basically they're the type of like they're a podcast where they get a bunch of women on and then they like uh, just women who, for example, have only fans or, or different kinds of and they're these men teach men how to be men. Like they're these types of guys. Okay. And they ask these women question stuff, and they're like, "What are you gonna do when this pool dries up? Like this only yeah. fan, like all this." Stuff. And they're like, "It's never going to like, I'm I'm making this money because these women are making lots of money, but they're also spending lots of money at the same yeah. time." And I'm not sure that a lot of the like I, I always thought it was something like that. Like fair dinkums, they have a place to do this. They're gonna make a lot of money if you can make like gonna put it out there if i could make a few million doing that who cares about the backlash i'm a millionaire i could survive like yeah. whatever so i get it that people would do it but then you think if you don't sensibly have a plan with your finances what happens because eventually that's not going to be a viable way to make money so you can't spend yeah. everything so you think about it from that perspective like as you get older all that kind of stuff but not what if they just completely cut you off <laughs> they just stop allowing you to post yeah. it because it's happening in what two no, months? Will, will they months, not? Yeah. Will, will someone not just come out with it and their in their own app or their own? So I don't, is Patreon? Um, is pay? Can you do it on Patreon or not? Is Patreon got no. a sex, sexually explicit? Like, no. So this is th this is the thing. Like I watched an interview with Th Philip DeFranco interviewed someone who makes a lot of money doing this, and they said like they're exploring other uh, platforms and stuff. Um, but one of the big things and the reason why only fans have stopped doing it is because they can't get investors to invest in them anymore for the two main reasons being the investors aren't allowed to invest in anything that's considered pornography like yeah. as the, right. the, the rules around their business or they believe there's like child pornography going on on the side. Really? Oh no. Um, not Not to say that they've seen anything that leads them to believe that but just the potential for that to happen is easy like a 16 year old girl signs up because she can make lots of money and makes a profile makes a social media profile doesn't say how old she is and then puts his content out there like it's easily done you know what i mean there's not enough in the way to prevent that from happening i don't know if there ever could be enough to prevent that from happening as far as the internet um so that's why they pulled away from it because they're saying, look, we can't get any more investment um, to be able to continue this company going. But it's seen as a slap in the face for all the people who have been on there because they're the reason anyone even knows what OnlyFans is. Like they they made, I think, like $2 billion in revenue in the last yeah. year. Um, and it's significantly, largely in part due to the sexually explicit content on there. Um so like I don't even know as a business model what happens to them once you remove the ability to do that. Like, do people even use it? Go on it. Yeah, like if that's where the major, like I'd like to see the pie chart to see how much the, of the revenue is actually from the the X rated stuff compared to the compared to the rest of the content creators out there. I like pies. <laughs> But OnlyFans, I always thought, like every time you hear OnlyFans, you hear uh, like in your in your head, you just think about sex. Yeah, yeah. And that's I I didn't like you're right, Alex. I didn't even know I, I knew about Patreon, right? I've done, I've, I've maybe heard of it, but I don't know what it. But is. I didn't know about OnlyFans, and the first time I heard about it, honestly, this is the first time I heard about it. 
Someone was making thousands and thousands of dollars by showing her foot, her toes. That's how I learned about OnlyFans. They yeah. said they the first thing I heard was that someone was making so much money, like they were comparing it from someone that goes out every day that works hard and then gets this certain amount of dollars at the end of the week versus this person that literally puts her feet on the on the camera for an hour and can make a month's worth. A month's worth of Ernie? um earnings. We sh- we're shaving my legs and we're showing <laughs> off these puppies. All right. <laughs> and there was like, I think there was a, there was one, I th- think there was one about arches, arches in your feet. Oh, I was like, I was like what is That's going insane. on? So yeah. Earn, earn. Yo. We're going to make a fortune. <laughs> I got these puppies ready to go. I'll go get a manicure. We'll take some <laughs> pictures. So is, is, is feet. Is feet um, too sexual? Would that be considered too sexual? No. No. Unless you're doing something with the feet. Like putting like, them in somewhere you shouldn't be. Like have it in fruit. That, no. That's all right, eh? That's fine. I, I mean, mean, you could do it on Instagram if, if you, you want it. <laughs> if, if, yeah. if you want, I can roll an orange in my foot. <laughs> sexy shit. Do two things at once, CJ. Take your... um. Yeah. Take your uh, your feet problems away uh, and get money. I know. I hope my plantar fasciitis and <laughs> get paid for it. Do you, yeah. I wonder do if there's a market for men feet. That's what I was saying. Is foot fetish only a thing that men have or do women have it? And if women have it, do you reckon they have foot fetishes for large feet? Hey, to be only honest, one way to find out. Feet and they're, and they're kind of dainty. <laughs> so like... My, my, my neighbor next door, <laughs> she said I got nice feet. Everyone's saying I got nice feet, right? So really, yeah. But she's married, mar- married with like kids and shit, you know. But like, she, she goes compared to her partner's feet, because she's got really nice feet. He's got ugly feet. I don't know what that says okay. about you, so, CJ. That I got nice feet. Yeah, but <laughs> takes care of them. That w- <laughs> <laughs> but why? Yeah, like because, nice feet compared uh, to what? Like to other men or to some women? To all women. women. <laughs> well, let's do it, my, CJ. Only fans. My, my feet, my my feet are smoking. All right. <laughs> when my feet enter, when I take my shoes off, my you yeah. see the steam just <laughs> bouncing off them like tss, tss, it's like a sizzle. <laughs> I guess like one of the questions, one of the questions I'd have, and obviously you'd have to see their accounts and everything. Is why do they need investors? Like, what are they doing? They they don't have because to. They don't, put their own, they don't want to put their own money in it because if they put their own money in it and it fails, they lose their money. So they use. But I mean, they no, don't I think Alexander's talking about the subscriptions that they've got. Like the creators on there, they have to pay a fee, right? Yeah, that's what they make money off the back of the subscriptions. So they take a cut mm-hmm. of every subscription fee that comes through. They don't need to market because the pandemic's done a wonderful job of that for them. Mm. more people are signing up like i think it's in the thousands of people are signing up every single day to make react to, to make accounts like i would just milk this as long as it's it will go for and then the moment you realize okay the next month we're going to spend money and it's going to lose us money just stop and just take your winnings like what? yeah i don't like uh, why? i mean unless unless they're thinking of um something bigger Unless they're thinking but, of taking it to, um, taking it into other medias and stuff, I don't know. I really don't well, know. This is this is that that sense of like where the idea of capital capitalism confuses me. Like, mm. why don't why? Are, like, if you won the lottery, you wouldn't be like, oh, I need to keep playing. I need to win more lotteries now. Like, you'd be like, sweet, done. Like that's it. I've got what I need. <laughs> like why? Why is there this sense of oh, I need to do more now? I need to do more. I need like a, a couple billion. Like that'll do me. It's a tech company as well, so it's output. A couple of million it will do me. Not a couple of billion. No, I know, yeah, trust Jesus. trust me. Um, but I mean that's what I mean. Like if they're having a couple billion revenue, I don't know if you. I've never seen an OnlyFans advert. Like I don't. I don't imagine they're spending much. And anything except for the development side of stuff, and that's not cost- costing them billions to do. Yeah, I, 
I don't know. I'd, I, I'm Drum, interested to see server. what happens. I'm interested yeah. to see what happens to the OnlyFans. Um, October 1st. October 1st. I mean, uh, like by that time, hopefully me and CJ have started up the OnlyFans <laughs> account and um, we'll, we'll see if we can make some money out of this. Money. Yeah. I mean, if people are I'm telling me, that people are telling you, sorry, that you have nice feet, that's like, that's, that is a weird compliment. I don't know how many times I've I walked know. around and someone said, actually, I've got a lot of a lot of comments saying that I have ugly feet. I, I, and yeah, you do. I, I feel like that's a weird thing to say as well. No, no, because you're always wearing thongs, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you're parading your feet, right? Yeah. And you kind of got like one toe going this way, <laughs> one toe going that way, one toe's like a freaking hook, right? Like if you were to put your if you were to put your feet in water, yeah. like in the sea, yeah, a fish would think it's a prawn and bite it. <laughs> That's how bad your feet are. Well, you know what? I can't. I can't. Yeah, I get some ugly feet, but it, it, I find it weird. That someone like said God that you did, have... did not bless you with good feet, mate. <laughs> Alexander, what do people say about your feet? They're not feet. They're hands. <laughs> now, my feet are just Why, massive. Have, uh, oddly large toes? No, not proportionally to my feet, but yes, proportionally to your feet. Like, my toes are as long as some people's fingers. But he has long toes. But my, my feet are as long as some people's arms, so... I, I don't... You know what they say about guys with big feet? Big socks. Then it... No, Which isn't big true, <laughs> big because socks. yeah, because they don't you, make socks for big, big feet. Shoes. Like they stop, oh. they stop. I for yeah, for basically my entire life, I've worn socks that are made for people with feet like five sizes smaller than mine. CJ, if it's Alexander boring. and I, yeah. I don't wish this upon him. If he lost it, both his hands, he'd still be able to be a coder because he could type with his feet. That's how long they are. But that we. But that would be a smelly keyboard. <laughs> so, to change gears a little bit, I wanted to show a video. Um, it's going to be a bit of a, a throw to our old friends that we've uh, Who? we've dealt Who with in the friends? past. You'll see. I'm, uh, I'm sharing up. Is it musky? No, but along the same tracks. In the same industry. Oh. I don't know if you've seen this one, but this came up the other day. This is the latest announcement or whatever you want to call it from Boston Dynamics. It's, uh, this says Atlas. I don't know what Atlas is. But this is Boston Dynamics' latest uh, display of their abilities with their robotics. Oh, and it's cool. wildly interesting. And uh, gets your creative juices flowing on where we could end up. When when's the next robotic Olympics? Well, the first. Was the next? When's the next robotic Olympics? Like, there's been another one. Well, the first, the inaugural robotic Re Olympics. Hit it. Flat-footed. Flat-footed. Oh! I, th I think, he, I think no. he's almost as heavy as me. What? Oh my gosh. Are they going that pace as well? <gasps> oh! No. No. What? No, 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 Wait, it's no, our no. team. Is that real? He dusts his shoulders off. Yeah. Is that is that is that graphic design? Is that like special effects? No, this is one hundred percent real. Is that is that two blocks in a robot suit? Uh, that's what I was thinking too. Uh, okay, is 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 a one block in a robot suit and it's Elon Musk in his natural form? <laughs> one of them so dusts his what, shoulders off. What is the most? 
impressive part of that that you just witnessed i quite liked the the boys would kill me because i don't know the real word they do parkour we don't but the one where he jumps over one-handed and yeah yeah that that impressed me yeah and then the backflips are really cool um mm. just everything i think the balance the balance was insane he jumped onto the beam two-footed onto the beam which was pretty that balance was awesome everything was good to be honest Actually, even the running, because I can't run anymore. If, I have like more of like a waddle. <laughs> even the angled boards, because they're yeah, rigid, right? So they're boards. like, I don't know, man. So they, whole, they've got like thing. actual joints now. They've got joints, man. So I think... That's and weird. then... All, like all of it's impressive. And like from an engineering standpoint, blows my mind. But I think the most surprisingly impressive part for me was, you know, when he hopped the, the balance beam and then he mm. jumped up onto the platform. Mm -hmm. When he mm -hmm. jumped onto the step before the platform, he, he actually stumbled. And but then that corrected. Didn't, yeah, that didn't, like, throw him off. Like, that to me is more of a sign. Like, I don't know why, but that impresses me a lot. No, that is. Like, it that is. didn't go to plan, but it went yeah. to plan. Because that was going to be my next question, actually. Because I didn't see the stumble. My I question would it, be, my question would be like, if something gets in their way, how they would deal with change. Now, if they start dealing with change, because like humans, when change happens, humans get emotionally. There's there's things that happen, and sometimes they just fall apart, right? But now, if you have a robot that something changes in front of them, and they're just able to adapt without without the emotional part. And the all that kind of stuff, that is scary. Yeah, because then that they're is... they're like running towards their goal and like flinging humans out of the way, left and right, left, right, and center. Yeah, because the human got in their way. My goal is no, to no, get no, to no, the no. end. What? Wait, 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 wait. What? Have, what have you done there? Human, you, you are just in the way. You, what are you doing? I'm, ta I'm talking about. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm talking about if you're playing sport and then someone comes in with a hard tackle, oh. the person that gets tackled gets emotional behind. behind for that person, yeah, right. That's what I'm talking about. And then when that you went into a whole new, you said no, sport now. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like that person. That person now is put off his game because mm. he's got this. His his eyes are coloured by red because he's angry or whatever. But if a robot gets tackled now, there's no emotional part. This is true. So and what they you're can saying just is you can't trash talk a robot. To get yes. in their head. That's right. <laughs> you can't get in their head. Do you know what I've just thought of? Imagine they create a waterproof robot that can dive, that can swim, and it doesn't get tired. Like, well, I mean, it would have to charge, but it'd probably have like some sort of solar, whatever. Well, why would um, that be amazing? Freaky. It would be amazingly what? freaky. <laughs> I feel like if we can we can finally see what's at the bottom of the sea. To say, if, oh, I feel like if they're gonna make that's what I was thinking. If they're gonna make mean? quote Since unquote robots for the water that they just. I mean, um, they already exist and they just don't look like humans. Like that would be. I can't imagine they would ever want to make a robot that looks like a human that can swim because that's so inefficient. It goes from land to water in mm. in like wars and stuff. It can just you know can just do anything <laughs> so what are you saying like our, our wars are gonna be like me with a controller playing cod no it doesn't need a controller <laughs> and, my ro and my robot running in and it what? needs a controller Could you? does it mm. so, uh, what? cj as lieutenant lieutenant siege how many how many um how many bloody wars you been in <laughs> i'm in one now just getting a drink what um, is at home yeah what i imagine if there was that am like amphibian type that you're talking about, it would be like a transformer, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like it, it would be like a human running on land, and then it would turn into like a boat <laughs> and go into that is the water. Freaky or something. man. Yeah. And then yeah. turn itself into a submarine and go under. Yeah. That's like cars. <laughs> the movie. But, uh, <laughs> like when we watch this, when you watch Spot the Dog, how it was yeah. probably only like two or three years ago. You know the dog Spot robot? The dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's called Spot. I um, meant Spot, the actual... <laughs> when you yeah, look at that, to, when you look at children's. now where that's at, when you look at these robots where they were only a few years ago, like running 
compared to what they can do now. Yeah. When you look at that basketball shooting one from the Tokyo Olympics, like... Oh, yeah. I genuinely think before 2030, we could have a robot Olympics. It might not have all the events, but I think you could have a good, decent amount of events before 20... Like, we're in 2021. Don't... Like, we're at the very beginning of the decade. And let's... So, to give a timeline perspective... 14 years ago, the first iPhone came out and we already have backflipping robots within 14 hmm. years. What do you think is going to happen in the next nine years? Um, <laughs> is this something that people have been talking about or no? I'll be happy with us being able to go outside. No, I'm talking about it. <laughs> I don't know if people are talking about it, but I want it. And then I it just gets Olympics. to a certain point where the robots go, these humans are using us, are using and abusing us. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a huge I, I, difference. Let's take control. I don't know why. Let's take control of the this first, situation. Your first um, uh, example was that the <laughs> robot was walking down and he was flicking humans left, right, and center. Now, now the hu- the robots have got a conscious. <laughs> they, they, we're manipulating them, I, and now their subconscious is telling their conscious that we have to <laughs> we have to take over the humans. <laughs> exactly what i think i think they're so interestingly magnificent but they're freaking scary and it's going to turn into death robots what, what is right bigger what, and they're going to take what is control. bigger than a quantum leap oh. <laughs> because that's how far you've jumped no yeah. i don't even know where you've gone no i th- guarantee i guarantee you these robots are going to take over humans this is why <laughs> you guarantee you need to- me <laughs> This is where you need to read that book, Life 3.0, because I promise you the type of compute, the type of technology that will ruin humans will not be one that looks like a human. Like that's the least efficient way for a robot to, to ruin a human's life. I agree and that also, there's probably more efficient ways, but I think that even if it comes to a point where these all these robots walking around at some point, it might take a while, but eventually they'll gather. But you say that, but again, like consciousness is a massive part of that happening, and that's not even like in the realm of possibility. Not at yet, the moment. not yet. <sighs> Give it a hundred years, and I think the, what I was the, what I was going to liken this boss dynamics, aside from the fit, the engineering side, I'm talking about the programming side. This is yeah. no this this is just a more elaborate version of you know those ones on the screen where you have to like direct it across a two by two grid to get to like a corner or something or remember when we were kids and we had like a little and you one step forward two that's there's no difference in terms of capability of this robot to that like it will do explicitly what you tell it to do it's not got any reasoning abilities or anything like that like the like that that what they what they do through these bosses they're it, very choreographed scenes like all those things have to be in the right place yeah the the reason i said like no, the stumble is because no, that's yeah. an engineering thing like they've they've made it the engineering side of the balance mechanism is enough that if it stumbles it won't just fall over yes like to mm. me that's the far so more impressive, impressive side is the engineering side of things not not the the ability but for what, it to take over. But one, <laughs> but about one day, it will be program itself. Yeah, maybe hundred years. CJ, from now. Um, <laughs> talking about robots, the new uh, Marvel Marvel movie coming out featuring Simu Simu Liu. He's looking jacked. He's absolutely looking massive. What's the Marvel? It's movie like called? looking in a mirror. It's him from you know that, you Kim's Convenience. Kim's Convenience. It's Simu, it's yeah. by the way. Simu. 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 I don't know the last name yet, but I know the first name is Simu. Well, I can't imagine him jacked. playing something that's not sort of comedic. Yeah, which is good. He's challenging Shang-Chi. himself. I Did mean, you he wasn't very comedic. Particularly comedic, comedic like actor. <laughs> No, not really. No, I mean, I'm not saying he was like the like slapstick or whatever comedic, but he was in a comedy show and he was quite lighthearted and he wasn't like, oh, it's going to be hard to see him as playing a different role. So that's interesting because I, like, when I think, I think, like, this fits him to me. 
more like the way he was in that show he was the one to me that didn't fit in the most wow is that because he had muscles <laughs> no he just seemed <laughs> more massive like he's it, to me he was the furthest from comedy like by a long way in that show like it didn't fit him his acting as well I feel like he would do better in a, something like this. I, like I'm, I'm excited to see him in some in this. I'm, I'd watch it. Yeah. You know, um, but you have to watch all the other movies. So Shang, TV series Shang Chi. First. So Shang Chi hasn't been getting the same press as the other Marvel movies, right? Oh, is that what it's called? Shang Chi. Yeah. And uh, on his Twitter, fourteenth of the eighth, twenty one, he said, "We are not an experiment. We are the underdog." The underestimated. We are the ceiling ceiling breakers. We are the celebration celebration of culture and joy that will something something. I don't know. But yeah, there's there hasn't been that many um I've not even heard of it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like there hasn't been the same advertising uh, 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 as uh, uh, the rest of them. I uh, I'm looking forward to it, personally. No, me too. I, I'm me really too. excited. I never heard of it. Until I know right I know it's now. in like two weeks comes out. When does it come out? Things Third September, early September. Yeah, third of yeah, September. Third of, I thought it was the second. So maybe it will start popping up on ads. It should have been coming out ages ago. But then, in saying this, cinemas yes. are closed, so it wouldn't pop up here, would it? But, but it would pop up on Disney. Like I haven't seen it in Disney. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it anywhere. Okay. Could it be because of the pandemic? They're not advertising as much as they usually do. Or mm. do you think mm. since it's it's we're based around an Asian, mainly an Asian character. Yeah, they feel like they've got a massive market anyway, so they don't really need to advertise it. Or do you think because right. it's an Asian character? <laughs> yeah, I was going more along the lines of generally, it being Asian would make it less appealing to this demographic on, on our side of the world, yeah. and then on top of that, the pandemic probably didn't help that. Yeah. See, like my my train of thought was, like, since it was Asian and like, there's a lot of Asian people out there, right? Mm. That they don't really need to advertise to us to watch it. Who's us? Western like world. Like me, you, Alexander. He's saying people that are not Asian because they. Yeah, that are not Asian, <laughs> like, even though you're Asian, dude. I, um, yeah. <laughs> I Do you mean in say, non, yeah. like non Asian countries? They've got, because they've got, yeah, yeah, non Asian countries, because the Asian countries are going to really watch this. Are they? And they're going to make a ton of money anyway. I'm not sure. I was looking at it and that factor. I didn't think of racism. No, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Like, I've, I've, been excited, I've been excited about this movie for two years, two, three years. When we were first I mean, the supernova. I didn't even know it was coming out until you told me. And I was like, oh. Let's watch this uh, trailer. <laughs> Throughout my life, the Ten Rings gave our family power. If you want them to be yours one day, you have to show me you are strong enough to carry them. I, I, I. You are a product of all who came before you. The legacy of your family. You are your mother. And whether you like it or not, you are also your father. I told my men they wouldn't be able to kill you if they tried. Glad I was right. He's just a criminal who murders people. Be careful how you speak to me, boy. I thought I could change my name. Start a new life. But I could never escape his shadow. My son. Can't run from your past. Is this what you wanted? You got. 
got this. Thank you. On a comic? Yeah. Yeah. So do none of it yes. just no one knows what it is because this people would know what this is. And the comic is comic. and the comic is based on Bruce Lee. Yeah. Oh, and it was, they were going to make I was reading they were going to make a TV series about it in I think the 80s using Bruce Lee's son Brandon Lee. But it fell through. Oh, really? He died, yeah. didn't he? Okay, yeah. Mar- um the Kung Fu movies were doing 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 very well and Marvel figured let's try to get into that market. Yeah. So they read an Asian based character. And but basically it's based on Bruce Lee. Oh wow. 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 Now that's got my intrigue. Be like water. But also, I the guy the guy he fights at the end is the abomination. That's the Hulk's villain. Really? So would that bring in a a Hulk movie now? Oh. Interesting. I I don't know. Right. Watch I'm still watching it. I'm still watching it. I'm still uh I'm still intrigued. Talking about um I think this will intrigue we'll um Alexander a bit. Uh we're talking about superheroes. Elon Musk has just announced that he's working on a humanoid robot next year. I need to I saw Lex Friedman has made a video on the roundup of their technology there. I want to watch it. I saw the picture of the what I'm guessing is what will be that humanoid robot look. The it, next line says, the Tesla bot is built so you can run away from it and most likely overpower it. <laughs> it looks it looks like a, yeah, like this, it looks like a Tesla, but in a human form. Oh yeah. my god! Look at it. Yeah. That's that looks like a Black Power Ranger. Yeah. Half black. Yeah. Quarter black. Like a modern Power Ranger. Does doesn't it actually? Wow. What's the purpose? What like what's he building it for? Five foot eight. Oh, it's five foot eight. I wonder how they came to that height. That's average height. Approximately one hundred and twenty-five pounds. Designed so you can run away from it and most likely overpower. But why? Why would you want to? Because in case be... something happens and you still have control. But that doesn't build oh, confidence. Man. The idea of designed you can run away from it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like that makes me less con- like. I'd rather say, is it, sir, Mister Elon? Is it designed so you can run away from it? No, there's no need to run away from it because nothing will ever go wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Holy, Give it a hundred. I didn't even years. think about that. I, I was just thinking. Um, I was thinking like they should build a robot, right? That is average. And if you're above that, right? You're good. And you're doing okay. It's your it's your marker to know how how you are as a human. Oh no, that's really awful. So if you're you're shorter than five eight, you go well. All right, uh, what what else can I beat this robot in? This is your marker. This is where humans should be. Oh God, that's the worst. I'm just idea in the world. Do you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about I don't know why. I'm thinking about this robot and if it was like be able to be like your personal trainer or something, and like when you're running. <laughs> It would pace yeah. with you, like next to you, and like could help you. But then, like if you're in the gym, say you're lifting weights, it could give you the perfect spot so that it Until takes it to go the right you and resist- you with Say the you're benching, over. like it oh, takes the right resistance so, from you. So, so you're you always at still- max. Yeah, you're always at max push. Mm. Yeah, nice. Anyways, um, that's it. That's it for another week. Thank Can you. Can I for just jo- say one more thing? Um, a fantastic thing about wearing a mask, which I've been figuring out recently, is I can sing all I want or lip sync and no one knows. <laughs> and it is awesome because I like to walk and listen to music. So I'm like, <laughs> no you, one's none the wiser. You know, one thing Everyone's I liked about um, wearing a mask is that I say stupid comments to people that walk past me and then I go, who said that? Who said that? <laughs> um... That is another episode of the B-Side Word Podcast done for another week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Devin here with Emma and Alexander. CJ had to leave early. I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.